Hey everybody, Elizabeth Nader back with you, Jersey First TV. I'm excited tonight to bring you an educational half hour to talk about such an important issue in New Jersey, money, and who better to talk about fiscal issues than Senator Oraho. Senator, welcome to Jersey First TV. Elizabeth, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. Well, we're thrilled to have you because if anyone is an expert on fiscal issues in this state. It's definitely you. You're well-respected senator in this area. And you've been serving since 2008, is that correct? Correct, January 2008, yep. And so we've had, a, this is your 13th year, which is amazing. And you are an accountant. Where does the time go? I'm not I don't know. Sure. <laughs> You're a young guy. You have a lot of years left, a lot of years <laughs> left, senator. Um, you are an accountant by training, right? I am, I'm a, I'm a CPA and I'm also a certified financial planner. Well, this is amazing experience to bring to the issue of fiscal uh, situations in New Jersey. We're facing kind of unprecedented, it could it get any worse, Senator. I mean, you know, four years ago we said things are bad and now we're facing after the pandemic, it just keeps getting worse. More spending, more borrowing, taxes continue to, rate, to go up. Where do we go from here, Senator? If, if, if you could design the perfect legislation to fix this, what would it be? Well, the first thing I do is I, I've been uh, one of the co-chairs for the, the Path to Progress. And the first thing you got to take a look at the, the root causes and how we, we control spending. And the first thing I would do is um, I would look at, obviously, the um, uh, pension and benefit plans. Right. Um, we've, we've talked. That's, that's a recommendation. Uh, and actually, for the uh, newer employees, uh, if you had a – it's called a cash balance type plan that – that's got a hybrid between a defined benefit plan and defined contribution plan. And most people understand what a defined contribution plan is because right. it's a 401k, it's a 403b, a 457. And what they do is, is it allows you to, it's portable. So if you don't, if, if, if you don't like uh, your job uh, here in the state, unfortunately, if you're there after 10 years, when you get vested, you have a tendency, hey, I'm, I'm going to stick it out. I don't care if yeah. I don't like my job. Let's stick it out. Right. A lot of, and let's face it. The um, nowadays, most most uh, people entering to the workforce, they're going to change jobs. And things have changed versus when, say, my my mom and dad entered into the workforce. Right. Uh, you know, newer employees are probably going to have you know between five or six different employers right. throughout their career. Things have changed, and this would allow them the portability. And um, quite frankly, it's also a lot more of their own personal responsibility. Yeah, well, explain this to people because what's going on is we've built this sort of sacred cow of the pension system, right? Oh, yeah. And you're not seeing this in the private industry anymore. You're seeing the 401k, which of course means that I as the employee can contribute, my employer can contribute, all of that can be uh, you know, put together as we see fit. But with the pensions, we have this obligation now to these people for an extended period of time. And at this point, I know over the decades, a pension system has been used for other things. At this point, we're really not able to meet our obligation. So what you're saying is that needs to come to a point where we don't fund further pensions. Is this what you're saying? We start a 401k and then we continue to find ways to fulfill the obligations that exist. Well, unfortunately, we we, we, we can't just go and, and have a 401k uh, right away because that's that's called like freezing a plan and we'd have to come up with 115 billion dollars in order to to fund wow. a plan, which, which is just you know um un, you know just not realistic so uh what a cat and what most um, a lot of companies have done is a thing called a cash balance plan and it's a hybrid plan between you have a defined benefit say for the our recommendation was for the first forty thousand dollars right uh, so you would continue to have contributions into the plan that is woefully underfunded, yeah. woefully underfunded. Yeah. So, uh, but anything above that, uh, the individual would be responsible for, say, their contributions. The state would have some sort of match that would be negotiated. Yeah. And, and the key thing is, why did we get into this trouble in the first place? First of all, down in, down in Trenton, and, and unfortunately, if you look at it, it was done on both, uh, both parties who, who, who took care of it. Uh, they like to make promises and no payments. Yeah. So, and, and quite frankly, and I used to say, 
uh, long-term planning in, in Trenton is done on a watch. It's done minute by minute as opposed to 5, 10, 15 years that yeah. most you know successful companies have, have learned to do. And they make adjustments, but that does, just doesn't happen down in Trenton. Right. And, and so we came up with the um, you know, similar to a cash balance type plan, very similar to what the military is now using. Mm, interesting. So, yeah, yeah. And it's, I mean, that's just that that's just one of the things to, you know, that that uh, would help get uh, some of the costs, uh, certainly uh, more predictable. And yeah. like I said, down there, a lot of a lot of times promises may like to be made. Uh, payments are, are, you know, don't are difficult. And that's how we got into this problem. We really did. We, um, the idea that, you know, uh, the state stopped putting money into the plan, uh, our contribution on an actuarial basis would have been about $700 million had all the contributions been made over time. Right. Now, we, they got to put in nearly $7 billion just to keep up with what the actuary says that we need to put in. That wow. is unsustainable. Wow. Uh, so anyway, that I mean that's just one of the, that's just one of the aspects uh, that that we you know that we could do. The other the other aspect is you know, and we had spoken about it is make sure that the you know we have been we have residents in New Jersey that are that quote unquote are working for a company in New York. Right. They are paying higher taxes. They're paying high to a state where they're not even going to work. Right. And that, and, and it's been happening for years and that's over a billion dollars. And yeah. the key thing there is we know that uh, the, the worst thing that we have in, in the state of is property taxes. And the, when, when somebody pays an income tax, it goes into something called the property tax relief fund, which funds education. It funds the senior freeze program, which helps our seniors, you know, uh, uh, affordability. And it, it helps fund what's called the homestead rebate program, so it helps to, it helps to offset some of the burden of the uh, the property taxes. Right. Unfortunately, that all that money is going to New York City. Right. New Jersey has been allowing its residents to be taxed by New York while they're here and you're working in New Jersey. The pandemic has actually um, exacerbated the the issue. Um, but it's been happening for decades. It's been happening for years. So let's let's set that up again for people who maybe don't commute yes. and really don't key into it, uh, Senator. You're talking about over a billion dollars that we're basically giving to New York. Now, in circumstances prior to the pandemic, this was about people commuting to the city, which of course in certain counties, it's over 50% of people that work outside the county. So we have a lot of people in certain counties commuting. Now, of course, with the pandemic, it's been the shutdown and people haven't gone back. Still, though, this hasn't been fixed. So we're still looking at giving to New York over a billion dollars that you're saying could offset the property tax relief fund that would help us there. Now, this is an issue that seems like a no brainer to fix. So I want you to explain to people, because I think one of the things Senator, that frustrates us, just the common people here in New Jersey, the taxpayers, these issues are not being fixed. And people that are smart like you come with the solution and it doesn't go anywhere. So I want you to explain different ways we can fix this. First of all, talk about the lawsuit between New Hampshire and Massachusetts. This is an example of a direction New Jersey could take. Very good. You've done all your homework, Elizabeth. Very good. You're <laughs> a, a, absolutely, absolutely right. The uh, New Hampshire and New Jersey, New Jersey should have had a lawsuit and helped its uh, residents a long time ago. Yeah. Because as I said, the, the pandemic has really accelerated the issue. But as technology got better, people were working from homes for right. years and years and years. And the percentage was just going up and up. So New Jersey could easily, I think, could have, you know, helped one of its residents become successful in a tax court case against New York. And I think, and I think what they were concerned, they always looked out and they said, wow, you're going to double tax people. No, it had nothing to do with double taxation. Nothing yeah. at all. It, right. it has to do with Somebody who's worked in New Jersey saying, okay, I worked 100 days in New Jersey and I worked the rest of the time in New York. So let's say that that split happened to be, you know, 40% in New Jersey and say 60% in New York. That means that, you know, 60% of their uh, taxes should be paid to New York and 40% to New Jersey. Right. That wasn't happening. And unfortunately, and unfortunately, 
I've said now uh, the administration when New, New Hampshire decided to uh, file a lawsuit against Massachusetts because New Hampshire does not have an income tax, uh, you know, an indiv individual income tax. Right. So they have they have residents that are in their homes or in their apartments or someplace in New Hampshire, and they're still they have then they're not using any services whatsoever in Massachusetts, and Massachusetts is saying I'm still going to tax you. What I was really upset with is when the, the pandemic first happened, and it's still there. I, look, I, I brought this up to the administration right away, and quite frankly, the, the instruction on, the, on their website was to tell companies of New York to keep withholding New Jersey, you know, New York taxes from New Jersey residents. So then um, Senator Sarlo and I put in a bill and said, listen, this, this is an issue yeah. that is affecting so many people. So many right. people, right. and and quite frankly, the administration I think started to take a look at it and said, "Holy mackerel, this is a lot of money." It's a lot of money, and you think they'd want that money? Now, this bill that you've introduced directs the treasurer really to look more deeply into this issue. Explain to people where we go from there, because that's one thing. It just directs that um, that action to take place. But how do we actually? fix this? What is the mechanism to fix this? Can you explain that? Well, if, if first of all, if, if the Supreme Court takes the case and we and New Jersey filed a, an amicus brief and the and the uh, brief was actually very good. It was uh, and explained how New Jersey residents uh, are paying New York tax. And quite frankly, they're not using any services. They're not even going into the city for, you know, for a year now. They haven't even been, uh, you know, across the bridge or in through the tunnel or anything, or on the ferry, or anything like that, and and they came up and they said, "Listen, it's between uh, nine hundred and uh, nine hundred million and one point two billion, right?" Wow. And and as I said, most people would pay less tax to New Jersey than they currently do to New York. Sure, that's the bottom line. They would right. pay less tax, and that tax would go to New Jersey to help us with our. Uh, school right. funding, senior freeze and stuff. Yeah. So that's one way if the, when hopefully the Supreme Court takes a case, uh, but unfortunately this is a bit of a long run yeah. that the Supreme Court has to take the case, that New Hampshire has to win the case, and then certainly obviously that's good for, that's good for New Jersey. Another right. way to do it, another way to do it, I think, is to have New Jersey help it, one of its residents fight New York of the fact that they should not be taxed. Right. If we were able to get a um, a court case win for one of our residents, we could obviously use that as as precedent. The other thing I think we could do is, uh, and I've talked to some of our federal legislators and say, hey, listen, why is it that a new New Jersey resident in their place in New Jersey is still paying New Jersey tax is paying New York tax? I mean, so um, the federal federal, um, you know, legislators could take it up as well yeah. and get a federal law passed that say, hey, listen, you you know, if you're not going into work into a particular state, then you should, you know, if your home state has an income tax, you should obviously be, you know, should pay, you know, pay it there. Right, right. It's common sense. So what is the status of your bill right now? Right. Well, the bill it has not been taken up by the assembly. All right. It passed the Senate uh, overwhelmingly, um, I think unanimously. Uh, but I do think it was the impetus for the uh, administration to take a look at the issue. And when New Hampshire and when New Hampshire uh, decided to, you know, to file the case against Massachusetts, uh, I think the administration said, "We better, we could better get on board with this because yeah. this is not something." And 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 Elizabeth. They they made a calculation and they said it was between 926 million and 1.2 billion. I think that's way too low. Wow, too low. really? Oh no, ab absolutely. There, there's uh, and there's going to continue. I I think we're talking about they 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 mentioned that this is just during the pandemic this year. I think that's an annual number every wow. year going wow. forward. And I and I think it'll only continue to get uh to continue to get larger because you know I I do think. You know the way people work has changed, yeah. And it's going and 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 as you know, technology is obviously going to continue to get get better and better. Um, we're we're I'm I'm one of the sponsors of the bill to look at the connectivity and broadband because that's one of our most important infrastructure issues today. Absolutely. No right. no no doubt about it. And 
you know, look, let's, we're doing this right over the, you know, how many people are in different like Microsoft Teams or Google Meet or Zooms and yeah. we're doing this right here today. People yeah. have gotten very accustomed to doing this. Right. And, you know, quite frankly, I, I think this is, um, it's been happening quite a bit. Uh, when I worked in New York City, I left in 1998 and it was just starting, you know, more and more people were working from home and, and whatnot and they were calling it hoteling. But now yeah. in 2021 and 2022, it's just going to get more and more so. Yeah, it feels like it's the rule, not the exception anymore. So people that, that are interested in ha pushing this forward, what can they do? What can constituents do to say, hey, guys, this is a big deal to us. We want to support this change. They call assembly members. They call, who are they calling? Because they can call, they certainly, call. Well, the Senate, has, the Senate's already passed the bill. Okay. But, um, uh, certainly the, the assembly, they can call the assembly and ask them to pass the bill. The administration, right. I was, I was pleased when the administration took the step to do this, but there's more they can do. Yeah. There's a lot more they can do. Like for example, okay. you know, take up a case of a resident and get a, um, and, and, and get a uh, verdict from, uh, you know, for a resident and, and show that, that we're really sticking up for New Jersey residents. Yeah. Um, and quite frankly, I've, and also with the federal legislators, um, now obviously with, uh, you know, uh, Chuck Schumer being the majority leader in the Senate and he's from New York, he's probably not going to want a bill like this coming through. But yeah. our legislators should be fighting for it. Yeah. Agree. Yeah, but it, and, and Elizabeth, it's it's something that we should have been, that New Jersey should have been doing. This is not new. No, no. And this this has been broken, Senator. Is what you're saying? It's been broken for a while, and it was it was it was going to come to this point. It's an election year, so this should be an election issue, don't you think? Uh, it, it 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 should absolutely should. And you'd be surprised. You, I, how many people have called me? And people, you know, different reporters and whatnot and says, I'm working in New Jersey. You're right. I didn't even thought about it. I'm working in New Jersey and I'm still paying New York tax. What's going on here? Right. And and and, and I did a comparison. Any you know, anybody uh, it's gotta be it's gotta be in the ninety percent of the people who would end up paying less tax. Wow. And, oh. and the fact that it would come here and everybody knows the issues we have with school funding. Everybody knows the issues we have with, you know, listen, if we could give our senior freeze program, you know, and, you know, uh, additional additional uh, resources, and if we could give um, more money, have our New Jersey residents uh, not paying tax in New York and keeping more, more money of their own, absolutely. Yeah, this is the right thing to do. And, you know, this feeds into, like you said, it really feeds into property taxes, which is the big issue in New Jersey. Anything we can do to offset that. Our governor's spending like crazy. Um, we're going to talk about the budget and all of that. But here's what I would like, Senator. Can you break down the property tax issue for people? Because this is something that is so frustrating as a resident of New Jersey. And I have to say, a lot of people don't understand why it has to be high, what affects it. And how the heck do we get our politicians to get this under control? Can you illuminate the issue? Yeah, one of the, one of the, obviously one of the biggest issues is is how we fund our K to twelve, you know, our, you know, ed education, um, and that's probably if you take a look at the property tax as well as what the state you know puts in, it you know it's it's you know about between twenty eight to thirty billion dollars, right? Um, so the issue is one, one of the ideas, you know, listen, on the path of progress, I talked about, you know, regionalization of K to 12 districts. We have 600 different school districts, obviously, you know, uh, different, you know, those districts have, everybody's got, you know, probably, um, the duplicative type of, you know, administrative things and whatnot. Um, but, you know, we made a recommendation to, to have a K to 12 district, um, so that, you know, one, it would help the uh, educational, um, you know, you know uh, curriculum coordination and that, that sort of thing, right? But when you take a look at that, now think about this issue we're talking about, a billion dollars, and most of it, and remember, that goes into what's called the Property Tax Relief Fund, right. which is education is our number one issue about how it is, um, how it, you know, it's funded. And you know it has an impact on the state level. It has also an impact, obviously. Uh, it's if you look at most people's property tax bill, they'll say, okay, 
my municipal taxes is X percent. And a lot of times in the rural areas, your municipal tax will be around, say, you know, anywhere up to, say, 25 percent. Your mm -hmm. county tax may be up to 25 percent as well. And then half, you know, 50 percent, at least in the, in, in the more, you know, rural type areas, will end up being your K to 12, uh, you know, property, you know, school funding right. tax. Right. You know? So this this is an area where, quite frankly, on, on the, it has the New York issue has so many different impacts that, you know, quite frankly, helps the school funding. Yeah. It helps the property tax. It helps our seniors. It helps our rebate, you know, the, the programs. So, but at, at, at the same time, it's, you know, so that is one of the biggest issues we have with respect to the property taxes. So to me, this is this this is a um, a home run, yeah, uh, and something we should be going after. The other thing is, to the extent that we can help uh, low lower the burden on property taxes, say for our businesses, right? If we have more people that are working, say, work in New York and live in New Jersey, and those employers start to say, "Hey, listen, you know, New Jersey, you know, it's 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 getting its uh, you know property taxes in order. This is going to help them." If that, that person is now employed in New Jersey, employed in New Jersey with the employer, that's a grand slam. Yeah. It's yeah, a grand right. slam. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I really think we should focus more on this issue. I thank you for advocating for it. And I'm hoping that all of your comrades will also, you know, step in and, and support it. Um, we should be talking about this a lot on the campaign trail. You know, in addition to I keep talking about it, all, I all because it, as I said, they said it's a, a, a billion dollars. I think it's I think it's much more than a billion. It's a lot it's of money. It's a lot of money, and the way you paint the picture is amazing. The difference it could make for us. It, it's it's clearly a no brainer for us to be addressing this and reaching resolution on it. Let's go back to Murphy for a little bit. Um, one of the things that's been really frustrating is the amount of spending that's been happening and an out of control budget and borrowing. How do we dig out of this? I'm going to put you at the helm right now. You're going to be governor. What do you do? What do you do to dig us out of this mess? Well, that's a, first of all, you got to go. As I said before, you got to go to the cost drivers, right? And you, if you like, once once you're in a hole, you got to stop digging. Yeah. You know, you're hole, you start, you start. And you think about this now. Governor Murphy had said that um, he's 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 presiding over smaller government. Governor Christie's last budget, he's he's now spending ten billion ten billion dollars more than Governor Christie's last budget, nearly thirty percent higher. I don't know how anybody said that that is low that that's lower government. No. The other thing that they um, that they've done obviously is they they've gone out and they borrow. They said we're we're going to stop kicking the can down the road. They had a, they had an Olympian gold medal kick of four point three billion dollars in borrowing, right? And now our tax they're going to have to pay that back. And what is really um, uh, frustrating and and you know very very annoying is the fact that we said for over a year that they were underestimating the revenue impact and thank God because our businesses our people our residents were so adaptable yeah. and despite what the government was doing to them they were still able to uh, help um, keep our economy going and whatnot you know um, and our revenues came in much better than the dire predictions that Governor Murphy's administration made. I remember when he was down with President Trump, he said 30 billion. Right. And we said, where did he get that number from? In his administration, I said, we don't know where he got that number from. So then so then they said it was 10 billion. Then then you know, obviously we went, the Republicans tried to sue to stop the borrowing, and they and the Supreme Court said, okay, you can you can borrow for the revenue loss. Well, guess what? When it was all said, they went out and borrowed 4.3 billion. The revenue you lost wasn't anything any near there at all. And then what they did is they structured they structured it as a non-callable debt that can't be that that um, can't be you know called in to be repaid. And it's 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 absolutely it, to me it's it's absolutely absurd. So one thing you stop doing you stop digging and and forget yeah. the show. They got a backhoe down there digging. Yeah. 
Well, something happened to common sense because if you or I managed our lives that way, uh, we we would be in a big mess. You know, you you can't keep living beyond your means year after year. We have, I think, more state employees per capita than any other state. I mean, our government is growing leaps and bounds. And at the same time, Senator, we're losing families, we're losing businesses. It's not as though people are choosing to come to New Jersey, except if they are escaping Manhattan, frankly. So how do we stop this mass exodus? I think, you know, well, first of all, you think, you think about New Jersey, we, we got great assets. We, do, we got a great workforce. We really do. Listen, we, we um, obviously our, our educational system um, and compared to the rest of the states is, is, is good, is very good. We can argue how it's funded and we should have those arguments and those debates and whatnot. And the location, listen, I'm not the brightest bulb in the chandelier, but I know we're going to be between New York City and Philadelphia for the rest of my life. Yeah. I know we're not going anywhere else, right? So you look at it, and what do they say? Location, location, location. Yeah. Now, technology has changed that a little bit, but it's never going to, it's never going to uh, eliminate the idea of having a great, you know, great location. And you look at New Jersey, we got the shore, we got the mountains, we got, we, we have everything that most states would wish they could only that they could they could have. So we got the assets. All we did, and it used to be, New Jersey was a great place. I mean, New Jersey had uh, you go back just say twenty years ago, companies were looking to come to New Jersey. We didn't have any kind of problem. And then, quite frankly, because of all the decisions and whatever that we made, we we outpriced the value that that had there. So the key thing is you got to go after the cost drivers. The biggest ones we have, without a doubt, is our um, you know pension and healthcare type of you know type of plans. Right. The issue we have uh, so many different the regionalization of school districts would help you know significantly. This issue in New York and New Jersey would help significantly. But the other thing is you you, you stop digging. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Stop digging. And, and the other thing the other thing you do, Elizabeth, is you stop making promises that you know you can't pay. Amen. Absolutely. You're just kicking it down the road for our children. Are any of these issues proving to be bipartisan, though, Senator? I think that's the frustrating part. We are not seeing movement like we would hope on common sense reform. Well, actually, the, we were able to get past the bill with respect to the New Jersey issue. Uh, we actually passed a bill. I, I was a sponsor of the bill with Senator So on something called the uh, Government Efficiency and Regulatory Re Review. Um, I know um, even Grover Norquist had, had talked about it. People have talked about this could end up being a national model, that the idea that you would have a review of regulatory affairs and things that, um, you, know, uh, you know, the state government does to make sure that we're, uh, that, you know, let's face it, things, technology changes. Yeah. We should be looking at the regulatory affairs and whatnot to make it uh, New Jersey a more valuable a more valuable state that passed the Senate and the Assembly and is sitting on the governor's desk right. and I that I, I hope he signs it because quite frankly it's it's something where the the legislature and the administration would work listen to uh, people and the businesses to say hey listen you know here's the regulations that are hurting us yeah. um, similar to what we did with when Governor Christie we had the red tape review you know, committee, and it was bipartisan, and it was very successful. So those are some of the things we could we could we could definitely do. Well, it's nice to hear that passed. It's nice to hear it was bipartisan. What is signed going? by the governor? <laughs> What's he waiting for? I have no idea. It's it's something. You, obviously, you see how quickly he signed some of the other bills that got same the like, example. You know, yeah, same day, right? Uh, and this one's been sitting sitting on his desk now. Quite frankly. It passed overwhelmingly, and and you know who who wouldn't agree? Why wouldn't you always want to have some sort of review to make sure that um, you're you're not doing things that, quite frankly, just don't make sense anymore? Right. So, what is the name of that? What is the number of that bill so that everyone um, can put pressure? Do you have it off the top of your head? I shouldn't ask. I don't have the bill. The, I, I will. I, I can. I can send it to you. But it is. Okay. It, it is. It's called the. Uh, Government Efficiency and Regulatory Review okay. uh, uh, Commission. Uh, quite frankly, the, the, the head of that, it'll be a bipartisan I issue. It'll have public members uh, from business and public. Uh, and actually, to tell you, we made it to that. The, the 
the, the administration's chief technology or innovation officer would be the chairperson of it. Yeah. You know? so. Yeah. Sounds great. It sounds great, Senator. I, I have to ask you kind of the elephant in the corner, which is not just a fiscal issue. You're an expert in all of that, which we so appreciate your experience and really standing up for, you're standing up for, for small businesses and families, frankly, trying to get us fiscally responsible. How are you feeling with the emergency powers of the governor and this continual 30-day renewal? Horrible. And 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 I've we've done uh, on the Senate, and I know it's been done by the Republicans on, in the Senate as well as the Assembly. I know uh, Senator uh, Brian Bergen just did it in the right. Assembly. Um, I did it. Uh, I've done it twice now. I know Senator Panacho did it, and so did Senator Testa. Uh, what there's a, there's a rule that says you make something the order of the day. So we we stood up on four separate occasions, four separate occasions, to bring a bill to the Senate floor that would uh, essentially have the legislature, uh, the governor, any governor would have to come back to the legislature after 14 days. We didn't even say 30 days, whatever, but uh, but there's a year, over a year now, where one person has been making the decisions. So what we did is we brought it to and made it the order of the day, and we went through our whole spiel of, we are a co-equal branch of government. Yeah. Why would we cede all the uh, authority to one individual? Yeah, that's there's right. A, there's 120 legislators and there's one governor. Uh, now, you know, might the legislature have agreed with some of the stuff? You know, in in the on, in the early stages of this, let's face it, people people were concerned, people were afraid. Sure. So we wanted to show that obviously we were working in a bipartisan basis. And we did some things quickly to make sure that we extended, you know, some deadlines and whatnot, like tax filings and, right, right, and, right. and have you, right? But why would we give one individual this kind of penalty? So what happened was we made our spiel, and what uh, what happens on the floor is there's a motion to table. The majority will make a motion to table, right? And once the motion to table is made, everything stops, all right, and and it's put up for a vote right away. Well. Every single time, the uh, majority party has been able to table the motion. So what they're saying is, they're saying that, that okay, we're going to allow any governor to continue to have this unilateral um, control over all decision-making. Now, when this first started, uh, Senator Sweeney, myself, Senator Sala, we put together a, we said, listen, uh, the governor isn't opening up the businesses and whatnot. New Jersey Business and Industry, the you know, Chamber of Commerce, they put together a coalition of, you know, right. I think it's over 100 different associations and businesses now to demonstrate that they had plans in place and any business, well, you know what you want to do? You want to make sure you keep your workers safe. Of you want to make sure you keep your customers, customers safe. Customers, yeah. So they're, they're, they, are, they are absolutely 100% um, behind that because that's their reputation. That's right. So what we started doing is we started having uh, public zooms, where we allowed businesses to come in and, and say what they what those plans were. New Jersey business industry, the commerce and chamber of commerce, they were pushing it with the obviously with the administration. Now the administration will always say that had no impact on them, but guess what? Every time we had some sort of hearing like that, the next day or a day or two thereafter, they made changes that. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, we had one on daycare. Yeah. And as we all know, that people needed the daycare, and, and they opened them up um, very shortly thereafter, and there's been no issues. There's been yeah. very little issues with respect to daycare. So that's the kind of thing I've been saying on the Senate floor. Why would the legislature, a co-equal branch of government, allow the executive branch to have this kind of unilateral power? And my bill, my bill is this. Because many governors aren't going to sign a bill that takes away power from them. Right? Of course. So my bill was a constitutional amendment mm -hmm. to go right to the voters. Nice. So I said, I'm not even saying, you know, why would you take away the right of a voter to say that they don't want to live under a dictatorship? That's right. That's they, right. They, they want to live where we have three branches of government. You got the executive, the, the legislative, and the judicial. Yeah. And right now, as far as I'm concerned, the legislature has taken a step and is sitting on on the back bench, waiting for this, waiting for the governor. And I was glad to see where uh, Senator Sweeney had said that 
we, you know, that it, it's coming to an end where finally, we well, finally. It's, it's 13 it's months later. Here. It's, it's 13 months. So, I mean, it literally, Senator, it feels like we need a civics lesson. I think some people have forgotten that we do have three branches of government yes. that we are supposed to have balance. And of course, we know that the New Jersey Constitution makes our governor one of the most powerful in the nation, but the intention was never this kind of power. And frankly, it's gotten to the point where it's become so commonplace. It's as though the Senate and Assembly don't even exist for many of us. We feel as though you guys have been completely neutered and you're unable to do what you need to do. And frankly, I, I think it's so egregious now for the Democrats not to rein it in is not a good look. So how important, Senator, is it for people to get involved in oh, this absolutely. cycle? Uh, the, the, very, very important uh, to get involved for the for this election cycle. And, and for and for every election cycle, but the idea that they're they're that um, they're going to allow one individual to have this kind of you know um, power over their over their daily lives and have nothing from the legislature. And one one the question I get asked the most is, why can't we do something about this? Yeah, exactly. I get I, I get that. Answer. Exactly. Why can't we do something about this? And what it, and what it takes is. Um, and I, I listen. I got to believe that um, constituents in the Democrat led districts are saying the same thing. They have and to be, Senator. They, to be. they own businesses. Their Absolutely. kids. Their kids go to school. I mean, this has become universally painful. You know the sad stories. You've heard them. You hear them probably every day in your office. And at this Three point, businesses. Three and yes. ten businesses. So you go down Main Street and you pick out every third, yes. every third building, and it's closed. Seven thousand six hundred restaurants have closed. Seven, in New Jersey, seven thousand six hundred restaurants. Yeah. And and and, you, and and the other thing which we're having a real issue with is you know the governor signed a bill today, you know for twenty five million dollars or something like this, and you see the money obviously that that's quote unquote in the rest. That's a pit compared to what these individuals. That these, you know, uh, and and they've been sitting in and and sitting in, uh, hoarding cash, quite frankly. And it's like too that, late. That's front. It's exactly too late, so, Senator. Those businesses bring, are coming back. Yeah. So bring in. So why would any legislator say eh, I'm going to let the governor continue to do this, and I'm not going to give, and I'm not going to give the voters the who have been suffering for this for over a year. I'm not going to get let them say that that. that you know, it's they should have a choice, or they should have a you know be able to make the decision that hey, the legislature, I voted for you too. Get in the game. That's right. That's right. We did. We did. We have representation for a reason, and I know you're trying to get in the game, Brian Bergen. Others are really yeah. trying. To, Senator, Brian did a great job. Brian yeah, did Brian. A great job. Yep. Always there, always there standing up for us. But um, this now needs to be a bipartisan thing because lives that are being ruined are Democrats and Republicans. People have left the state. They're not coming back. Businesses won't return. So all of this talk and everything is for naught if we continue to live under a tyrant. So, Senator, I have, I've kept you too long, but you're so we're just so uh, honored. I really appreciate to have it. Well, we to have you fighting for us and with your kind of experience and your ability to address these fiscal issues, I think it's really important for you to tell the voters on, you know, as we end here, um, that they need to get involved. Everyone is up for election this year, including the governor, as everyone should well know by now. If we want to fix our issues, then we need to think about every person we cast a ballot for. And this shouldn't be about a party. This should be whether or not they promise to do what Jersey First is all about. And our slogan is about putting policies above your own personal gain, about putting Jersey first. So, Senator, I know that's what you do. Encourage the people to look closely at who they're voting for. We'll, we'll do. I, 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 listen, Elizabeth, that is that is so critical, the fact that, and listen, we got into, New Jersey got into this, the, the message in, because, as I said before, um, elected officials made promises and they knew yeah. they couldn't make the payments. And yeah. that's where, and that's quite frankly, right, right where it starts. That let's let's face that that, that uh, any elected official, first of all, they got to be is is honest with you. And listen, um, any kind of any time when somebody say you know they're making a promise, you say okay, how are we going to pay for it? One of the things I'd love to see is I'd love to see New Jersey get on what's called the present value stuff. 
you yeah. got to you got to put in in you know in in the hopper today something that you're promising. Forget this. What is that on Popeye? The the wimpy effect. I'm yes. glad we pay you on Tuesday for a hamburger today. Today, you know? right? No more credit cards, Senator. If no you don't more. have cash in the bank. You can't do it. That's how I was raised. And that's how you remain fiscally independent. So listen, thank you so much for your leadership. You are thank outstanding. You. And I know that we will be relying on you more and more as we clean up this mess in the coming months, in the coming years. So Senator, thank you. And hopefully we'll hear from you soon. Keep fighting for us. We will in turn fight for you. Elizabeth, thank you very much. Very good. Talk to you soon. My pleasure being here. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Everyone else, we'll see you next week.